Hey, welcome back to Lone Bear Tactical. So I wanted to give you an update of what I've been up to. So I have gotten into reloading recently uh, over the course of 2020, and that was really a perfect time to do it because obviously there was the whole pandemic issue and people ran and bought a lot of guns and bought a lot of ammo. And that left uh, many not able to get guns and not able to get ammo. So really when the crisis hit, I figured, hey, let me get into reloading ammo right away. Let me learn how to do this and uh, see where it takes me. So uh, with that, I've been able to really get everything that you've seen behind me right here. Um, and I wanna kinda show you my entire workbench for reloading and essentially the tools that I use, the supplies that I use, and kind of just give you a whole walkthrough of my reloading bench. And if you're interested in any of these items, I'll link as many of the, as many of them as possible uh, in the description down below. So be sure to check that out. And I'll try to categorize them in, a, in the best way possible so it's easier to, to find these items. But most of them you can kind of get on Amazon and some other items you might have to go to like Midway USA, uh, for instance, to get some other items like that. So I'll uh, walk you through here and uh, hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so we're just gonna start down here on the bottom of the reloading bench and work our way up. So as you can see here, I have various things. I do keep some of my extra powder down here. I have some of this um, accurate 2230, that's for uh, uh, essentially my rifle rounds. And then I have the, uh, the power pistol by Alliant back there. I use that for all of my pistol. Uh, rounds like 9mm, 357 Magnum, etc. Um, and then I keep my shells down here that haven't been essentially prepped for reloading. So all of this is kind of fresh off the range, but I do categorize it by caliber. So in the bucket here is 9mm, back there is 45 ACP, some 357 Magnum, etc. Uh, and then I do keep some bullets here as well. These ones right here are 9mm, 115 grain lead bullets. And back here are some two, two, three rounds. Um, these are 55 grain. And with, for all of the two, two, three rounds that I've been reloading, I've been storing it in this ammo case here. So all the finished rounds go in here. Uh, and then I, of course, have some power tools for the home renovations. Uh, so got a Ryobi skill saw right there. And I try to stick to the Makita brand. So you'll see I have the Makita impact drill, uh, Makita sander, and the uh, Makita nail gun. And then I have a, a miter saw right here. And of course those are all just for the uh, home projects. And you can't have a workshop without these uh, paper towels. These are awesome. Make sure you, you get those. Uh, down here, I have the media, corn cob media. And this is by Frank Ford Arsenal. Uh, so this of course goes in the tumbler, is used to clean the brass. Um, this has worked wonders. I literally have use only an initial um, set or the the amount of corn cob I originally bought um, was in this box here. And I used some of that in the tumbler up here and I haven't changed it out yet. So for all of 2020, I've been using the same corn cob media that's in there. Haven't even replaced it yet. So that stuff lasts forever. Um, so let's work our way up and I'll show you what's in the uh, drawers here. So let's go into here. So on the left side, essentially, these are all of my reloading tools here. So I'll just kind of walk you through it. Um, right here, this is the Lee hand press. This is essentially a, a mobile single stage press. I actually started off using this press and I still use it to this day for certain calibers. And this is a great, you know, inexpensive, but a good quality press that really anyone can afford. This is, I think, Fant a fantastic option for someone to get into reloading. Um, and what's great about it is you can actually, like I said, it's mobile, so you can take this to the range even and reload ammo there. Uh, so it's really, really great tool to have. Um, and then I, you of course need to have some case gauges. So this is a 223 case gauge, and this is a nine mil uh, case gauge here. So you of course need those for reloading. I need to buy more of those, um, but you know, all this costs so much money. So. Uh, I, of course, have my dies. So I have the uh, 44 Magnum Lee dies here. This is a four set. And then I have a three set of the um, nine mil. So these are a three die set of nine mil. Comes with the shell holder as well as the uh, dip for the powder measure. Um, and then I have the 357 Magnum 38 Special three die set here by Lee. And then the Redding die and this one is for uh 357 
38 special there and this is the uh, crimp die uh, this die is awesome it does a really great job i've noticed that when you try to crimp with the lee dies uh, for the bullet seater die that one does in a three die set that one crimps as well as seats bullets i notice sometimes it'll buckle the case so it'll ruin the case uh, when you try to crimp using the bullet seating die but using this die it doesn't do that at all. This actually makes a really nice quality crimp. And Redding is probably the best brand of dyes that you can buy. Super high quality. But Lee dyes, there's really nothing wrong with them, but they are essentially the entry level dyes. So kind of when you get into reloading, these are the you know most affordable ones to do it with. They do a great job, really nothing wrong with them. Uh, but as you learn more about reloading and you get a little bit more professional, you'll learn uh, kind of the differences in quality that you get in the in the rounds that you reload so i can get more into that in another video but uh i do recommend these dies especially if you're just starting out uh then i have some primers these are large pistol primers i use that for the 44 magnum i use the sharpie just to mark certain things uh like the bags of you know shells and different bullets and then over here uh this is actually a really nice scale and i'll link this in the description as well so this is by frankfurt arsenal uh, just a digital scale to measure uh, powder. Uh, and this is just a really easy to use and compact tool to do that. Um, this right here is a case shell prep tool. It's a multi-tool by, by Lyman, a really great tool. It has a lot of extra uh, tools inside of it um, that seal in there and this just twists shut. But essentially this cleans out the pocket holes and um, if you are trimming your brass, it also has a, a deburring tool uh, for after you trim your brass, you gotta clean up the edges essentially. This tool is awesome. So if you're reloading, you gotta have this essentially. Uh, and then some digital calibers. These ones do a really great job. I forget the brand of this one, but if I, re if I can find out, this is by Nico, I guess. Um, I'll link this down below. This is also a really great set of digital calibers and all these tools are necessary for reloading. So I try to have them organized in a way that is just easy to um, uh, get to and so that they're, they're related to each other essentially. So while I'm reloading, I know I'm gonna open up this drawer um, and for other items, I'll open up that drawer. But last couple items here, uh, this is a primer tray. So you essentially just put your primers in here, shake them around, puts them on the right size. You flip it, and then I uh, can go ahead and get your primers uh, for reloading. So this one is good. It does the job. It's a little bit on the smaller side. I'll link it down below, but I do actually do recommend the Dylan priming tray. Uh, that one is much larger, and it fits a lot more of the uh, primer cases. So these ones fit fine, but there's some cases that are larger, and they don't fit on into here. So when you try to put the primers in here, you might have some spilled primers. Uh, so I do recommend the larger Dylan primer tray. Uh, and then this is just a funnel. It came with the Lee hand press. I use this all the time. This is a fantastic tool to have. You need to have a funnel for reloading. Uh, and then let's go over into the uh, right hand side over here. So we have a various collection of tools, we'll kind of go one by one. This here is my uh, punch set for various gunsmithing. So this is very nice. Um, you get brass and steel punches as well as the hammer. Hammer, of course, has a nylon side as well as a brass side. Uh, for anyone with guns, you gotta have something like this. So this is definitely a must have. And this one is by Wheeler. Uh, this one I don't think was very expensive, fairly cheap. Um, and then a multi-caliber uh, gun cleaning, or yeah, a gun cleaning set. Uh, I got this one with by Otis. Really nice, easily compact gun cleaning set in there. Uh, and you gotta have this. Uh, these Allen wrenches are a must. So get a set of these. And this here I use for trimming brass. So this is actually a really neat set here. Uh, essentially what you do is you put your shell in here and you go ahead and put this through the top of the shell. And this is your cutter. So this will turn and cut the brass. You can do it by hand. You can also put this into a drill and uh, just power through and trim a lot of brass that way. And this needle that you see here is specific to the caliber that you're trimming. So in here is a pack of different calibers and on here will tell you 
of what they're for. So this one in particular is for 223. You slide that in here. Uh, you just get an Allen key and you tighten it right in here and uh, you lock that in and you go ahead and, and uh, trim your brass. So this is a good tool. I notice it's not the best. It gets loose every once in a while and you have to kind of retighten the items in here. So it's not perfect. I'm sure there's other trimmers that are better, uh, but this one does get the job done. And then over here, I have a, uh, t a tool for cleaning the AR parts. So whenever I break down my rifle, I use this to help clean it. And then, you know, other various clean supplies. Got the snake brush here, the um, patches, etc. Some brushes, more clean supplies. Uh, these here are the the powder bars for the Dylan press here. So we'll get into a little bit, but these are just spare parts here. And that's about it for this drawer. Uh, these tubes here are for the primers again for the Dylan press. Now moving on up to the top. So uh, over here, I have a, um, a power surge projector. Um, so essentially I can plug in all my power tools up here or anything else that I need uh, for the work that I'm doing. This right here, of course, is a must have for reloading. So this is the uh, Frankfurt Arsenal case media tumbler. Uh, fantastic, great for the money. I highly recommend this. This one is, um, you know, if it's plenty of brass, I don't know the limit of shells, but I've dumped quite a few in here and it handles it just fine. Uh, like I mentioned before, the media in there is the original media, haven't changed it out, still cleans, does a great job. So anyways, that is a must have for any reloader. And then up here I have some tools. So these are some uh, essentially wire cutters, um, but a little bit more heavy duty. Uh, and then some files that I you know, use for various gunsmithing projects. Uh, for instance, um, on the Lee press, I needed to file a part on here. So I went ahead and filed it out, made it nice and smooth, and now that made the press work better. So I, re I recommend having a set of nice um, files to use for various projects. And then this here is for reloading oh. rifle rounds. So this is a, a flash hole deburring tool a must have as well for anyone that reloads rifle rounds. So essentially you, this goes into the shell, knocks out the little burrs around the um, the primer pocket and uh, makes for a more uniform burn. Uh, so this is just a way to get some better quality ammo when you're reloading. And again, another necessary tool. Uh, this is a, the Frankfurt Arsenal bullet puller. Great bang for your buck, highly recommend it. Essentially it comes with these little collets that are specific for various calibers. Uh, you put them in there, put the shell, and you're essentially using inertia to knock the bullet out. So the bullet is locked up top here, and um, essentially the primer is facing you, the bullet is facing the inside here, and you're just gonna knock it a few times and it knocks the bullet free. So plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do that, but I do, recommend that highly. This is actually kind of a tip uh, of advice here. So um, what I do is I use the same rag for lubing all of the cases before I reload them. So essentially by doing so, this this will inherently have a lot of lube on it. So as you put you know more and more brass on here, more lube, this just becomes a, a better place to kind of lube your brass because it's always gonna retain some of that lube in here. And then right here, of course, is the Dylan. RL550. Uh, this is a fantastic press. So you'll see I have it on the Dylan Precision mount. Um, this is bolted on there. I have a tray right here for bullets, um, trays here to hold shells, and then the finished rounds go into here. Um, this isn't auto indexing, this is a manual index press. So essentially you just uh, turn it manually and it's good. What's good about that is you get to control the speed at which you're moving and it helps prevent any sort of powder spills as you uh, turn. Sometimes the auto indexing presses will will spill powder in the shells that have powder in them. Uh, so this is just a way to control the speed and uh, is a really fantastic press. And you'll notice I have a light in here. So that's a little upgrade I, I installed recently on here. Um, I'll put a link for that light down below, but that's a total necessary item. Essentially, as you're reloading, you have to be able to see inside the shells. So when it's dark, you know, it, it's hard to see uh, if you have enough powder or powder at all in the shells, it's hard to see, you know, kind of what's going on. So this is just a better way to do it. I'll, I'll turn the light off so you can see. See, it's much darker. Um, so when reloading, it's, you know, makes it more difficult if you don't have light in there. 
So that's a must have. And then I have various calibers. So what's set up right now is nine mil. Uh, have all the um, Dillon Precision dies in here. These are better quality than the Lee dies. So I found that you know in reloading on this press with the um, with the Dillon dies, uh, the and the ammo does seem to be a bit better of quality when it's finished. So when I what I mean by that is it has a little bit of a nicer crimp. Everything looks a little bit more polished in terms of the way that the bullet is put together. So when when reloading you'll start to see the differences between the different dies but essentially what's great about this press is you can just essentially disconnect this bar you take out these pins that are holding in this plate and you get to pull that out okay when you pull that out you get to keep all the dies the way that they are and you don't need to reset them up again so when i want to reload nine mil at a later point i could just put this shell back in here and all the dies are set and i could just start reloading so You'll see back here I have other sets of these. So this one is set up for 223, and this one is set up for 357 Magnum. Uh, and like I mentioned, this is 9 mil. Um, and I need to set up some more. So right here, I'm going to set up either 38 Special or 45 ACP. One of the two will be in that one. And then I need to get some more of these little bases to hold more because I, I need to do one for 44 Magnum. Um, 38 special, 45 ACP, 7 millimeter. So kind of, you know, once I have all the dies and all the little accessories that I need to reload, um, I need to have a little place to mount them while they're not being used uh, so that I can kind of switch between all the calibers faster. But in the meantime, if I don't have it set up here, I'm using the Lee hand press to reload those rounds. So primarily I'm reloading the 38 special with this as well as the 44 Magnum. Um, but I will eventually load everything on here. So um, that's essentially the rundown here and I'll show you up top here. So up top, these shells are shells that have already been prepped and are ready for reloading. So I have them organized, of course, this one's 223, this is 357 Magnum. These, I, these are shells I bought uh, of 38 Special. So these ones are ready to go just because I bought them like that. And then a uh, nine mil that I've tumbled and prepped. So these are ready to be reloaded as well. Uh, this tray is again a must have. Complete lifesaver for reloading ammo. So this fits a, a numerous amount of, of different types of uh, calibers. So you'll see them listed up here for instance. Doesn't look like it does too good of a job focusing, but um, it does essentially 17 Remington, 223, 38 Special, 357 Magnum, etc. That's just on this side, right? And as you flip it, it holds more. So these are for calibers of 9 mil through 45 ACP. So essentially you can fit 50 bullets on either side or 50 shells as you're reloading. It's a great way to be able to hold the uh, brass in here without having them spill while you're, while you're reloading. So an absolute must have, especially if you have a single stage press, you need to have this. When you have a progressive press like this one, you know, you, this is holding the bullets as it moves around. So you don't necessarily need this with a progressive, but I still use this from time to time, uh, either when I'm reloading with the Lee hand press, or if I'm just doing something where I want the shells to be held here while I'm doing something over here. So this is a absolute must have. I'll link this down below if I can't, if I can find it on Amazon. Um, I'll link that and uh, various clean supplies. So these are uh, some lubes and cleaners. These right here are really great. So these are some CLP uh, wipes. They essentially are cleaner and lube in one. So I'll use this if I'm kind of in a hurry and uh, just need to clean up something really quick on one of the guns. If I'm kind of in a rush to go to the range or something, um, this is a great way to quickly clean your gun parts. And then I have this here, which is the hops. Uh, number nine, and this is the copper remover. So uh, when you're shooting copper bullets, um, a lot of times you might find that the barrel has copper inside of it. So this is a way to kind of remove that that copper residue. Uh, and then of course the, um, you know, the Hops number nine lube, this is a must have. Uh, this is my favorite lube. And this is my favorite cleaner. So this is the M Pro 7 gun cleaner. This is a foam. Uh, I prefer foam, but that is uh, my choice my go-to for for a solvent for cleaning firearms uh, this right here is mother's mag and aluminum polish this is fantastic for polishing um, internal gun parts so for instance you can polish if you look up 25 cent glock trigger job 
A lot of people will show you how to polish all, all of the internal parts of the Glock uh, to go ahead and give you a smoother, lighter trigger pull. So this I highly recommend. Um, and then this is the brass polish uh, by Frankfurt Arsenal. You, just, you essentially just put your brass in here, lube them up, and turn the tumbler on. And that'll go for about three hours. So um, this is great, has made the brass come out, you know, really shiny and new looking. Best case lube for reloading is right here by Dylan. This is the best. You essentially just spray it on and it evaporates and the lube is left behind and it gives a very smooth uh, finish to the shells while you're reloading it. It doesn't feel sticky at all or, or anything like that. It's nice and smooth and when you're ready to wipe it off when the shells are fully reloaded, easy to wipe off. So I highly, highly recommend this. Uh, and then I have my spare ammo that I've been reloading, all that is stored here. Got some 9mm, some more 223, 357 Magnum, 38 Special. And then as I move up here, there, this is essentially just my extra items here. So these are some extra um, uh, dies that I have. So 17 Remington, uh, 45 ACP, etc. Um, some of these are empty, some of these are full, it just depends if I'm using those or not. Um, this is a bullet puller, I haven't actually used this yet, yet to use it. Uh, and then some spare powders that I have uh, stored back here. Um, primers for pistol and for rifle, uh, more primers, and um, 44 Magnum reloading supplies as well as some defensive hollow points for uh, my 357 Magnum 38 Specials. And uh, that box back there is a 500 uh, round of um, 158 grain bullets for, again, the 38 Special 357 Magnum. Hey, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer you. Uh, this is just uh, my first essentially tour of, of my workbench I wanted to show you guys, uh, show you a little bit about the uh, tools that I use. And if you're interested in more uh, reloading specific videos, let me know. I'd be happy to share kind of how to reload certain calibers, uh, my thoughts on certain tools, how to use, um, for instance, the Lee hand press, how to use the RL550B, etc. If you're interested in videos like that, let me know. And I might make a little bit of a series on this channel specific for reloading so that if you're into this kind of thing or want to get into reloading, uh, this would be a great place for you to learn how to do it. So anyways, uh, take care, guys. Uh, keep fighting for your freedoms. Uh, don't give up. Don't give an inch on your Second Amendment rights. And uh, talk to you guys soon. Bye.